Hey, today I'm going to show you how to put a Python app into a Docker container or any type of container, I suppose. And uh, it's very simple, but I'll also be sharing with you what to do when you get in trouble and how you can debug this problem. So I have here in front of us a simple Flask app written in Python. It has just one route that returns hello and that's what I'm going to dockerize. So if I were to run it like this, I start it up on port 5000. There we go. And it, it just returns hello, right? Fairly simple. So let's just dockerize that. We'll change this a little bit. We'll say hello docker. Or should we say hello containers? I don't know. So to make this run inside a Docker file, we need to copy it in there. And to do that, we need to write a Docker file. So it should look something like this. First thing we do in our Docker file is we are going to have a from line. So you need a Python image. I'm just using uh, the Slim Buster version of 3.8. You might want to use 3.10 or even 3.11 just came out or whatever's newest or whatever your app requires. I always set this Python unbuffered equals one in a Docker container. That just makes sure I get the results out right away that they're not being buffered when writing to standard out. And then I'm gonna set a work directory. So in this case, my app is invented, you know, uniquely called app.py. And so I just set my work directory to app. I then have to, to set up my app the same way I would on my local, I have this requirements file which contains the requirements that I need for Flask, which is <clears throat> which is just the version of Flask I'm using. And so I copy that in to my Docker image using this copy command, and then I run pip install to install that. With that in place, all I have to really do is copy in my app.py, then I expose the port that I wanna map on, and then this final step uh, may look pretty familiar to you, right? Because it, it looks a lot like this. So you basically take the command to start up your Python app and you break it up this way using command and then a list of all the arguments that go into it. And once you have that in place, you can test it out by running Docker build. So Docker build, it's Docker space build, and then you pass it a Docker file, right? So you can just do uh, this if it's the uh, Docker files in a unique location, you can change that. And then um, what I'm doing here, right, is I'm tagging that resulting image to be called Docker Pi. You can give it more complex names too. Uh, I could call it AG Bell Docker Pi to namespace it. But when I run that, it's going to go through these steps and build my image, right? So we can see the results right here. We can see pulling my Python library. We can see it setting up the work directory, copying in things, doing the pip install. Uh, these are all cached because I ran this earlier. And then it exports it as an image called DockerPy. Pretty simple, right? Um, so yeah, once we've done that, we basically want to run our Docker image. So I called it DockerPy, right? Let me clear this so it's a little bit higher up on the screen. Oops, that's the wrong. So basically run it like this, docker run <clears throat> and the name of it. And then I want to publish some of the ports. So here we're exposing port 5000. And so I'm gonna map port 5000 from within this containers network to 5000 on my host machine. And so that should let me start it. Let's see what happens. So we get kind of the same results as before and it says it's on port 5000. Let's see what we get. So now we're getting the hello Docker because of the, the change we've copied in. So it's working, that's awesome, right? So that is kind of the basics of how you copy, of how you put a Python app into a Docker container. Things can get more complex from here. You might have multi-stage builds, you might have more requirements, but, but these are kind of the base cases. But I wanted to go over uh, how you debug if something goes wrong, right? So I'm gonna close, oops, and close that. Um, and let's go to our Docker build and let's just say that something in it is broken. Like I make a mistake. 
then when I try to build it, it should fail, right? So we're getting a failure there. Um, there can be all kinds of failures that happen. You might try to run something and the run might not work, right? If I do this, then I'll get a different type of failure, right? And, and sometimes it's hard to figure out what's going on, right? I'm copying in all this stuff and performing operations like it's a local Linux environment, but I don't actually have great access to that local Linux environment. And that's why I like to use Earthly, right? Uh, where is my Earth file? So Earthly is a build tool. It builds software. You can use it in your CI pipeline. It's sort of like Docker for builds. But... It's great for this specific case among many others. So I just took the Docker file and adapted it to this earth file. Um, so it's very similar. I just have a version at the top and then the same stuff, right? And then I have a step called build, right? And so the build step, let me scroll this down. So the build step is exactly the same as before. We have uh, copying in things, we have pip install, we have expose 5000. The only thing that's different really is at the end, I'm telling it what to save things as, which can be nice. So I don't have to provide it as a parameter each time. Um, and I also have this run false command. So the run false is my way of simulating a failure. So I can use this earth file, this build step in the exact same way. So let's try that. Um, so to do that, I just say earthly and then plus and my target name. So my target name in this case is build. Uh, so that'll build the image. Actually, let's just start with that, right? So if we take out this interactive and we take out this run false, um, that'll build the image. Same steps as before. Right, so you can see it's doing the same steps the Docker build did. It. it went a little fast, but it's pulling the image, yada, yada, yada. But what I want to do is see what happens when something's broken. So I'm going to put in this run false. So false just returns a, you know, a failing status at the command line. Um, so this will simulate me trying to do something inside of my Docker building step that fails. Right? Okay, so you can see that worked. It output the image. But now let's try it again. Right, and we're going to put in this interactive step, which I guess I could have left, but that is a, a little debugger. So when I run this, when something goes wrong, because it's interactive mode, it's going to throw me into the the Docker container that's being built, which is pretty useful, right? So I can see here that I'm now inside my uh, app that I created, right? Like here's the working directory app. Here's the files I copied in, app.py and requirements.py. And I can, I can test my failed command and see if it works, right? Um, I mean, I don't actually have one in this case that did fail. But I can see whether things are working correctly, right? Like if I had failed to copy in the right file, then I could see like, oh, it's not there. Oh, there's something wrong with it. And then once that's all done... Um, and I figure out what's wrong, I could exit from that, end up back at the command line, you know, fix whatever my problem is. In this case, it's my run false command. And then I can run it again. Ooh, come on, buddy. There we go. Uh, no, I want to build it again, and, and that'll give me the image, right? And so th that's my tip. If you run into problems putting together your Python Docker um, file and your Docker image, give Earthly Interactive a try. Yeah, and when all works, you may actually want to push your image somewhere. Um, so to do that, you would probably tag it like this. So here I'm tagging it. AG Bell is my username on Docker Hub, and I'm going to push it under Dockerpy. You might, if you have a custom repo, you might have the URL of it there. Right? And then you would just do a push like this and push the image up and then other people would be able to pull and use it. So that was Dockerizing Python. Hopefully you find that useful. If there's other things you'd like to see, please let me know. Leave a, a comment or what have you. 
And also check out Earthly. I, I work for Earthly and it's a pretty cool tool. I put a link in the description of this video, uh, but it's earthly.dev. Thank you for watching.